Hello, my name is Trevor Owsley, and my goal is to make the dark night of the soul easy to understand. What is the dark night of the soul, and why? One of the main important things I would like to explain to you is, for you to experience the dark night of the soul means you have been chosen to accomplish something different on this planet. Your dark night of the soul wants you to be healed. So therefore, this presence that you feel, and I'm sure you must feel this presence because when the dark night of the soul descends upon you, it's like you're being overshadowed. And this is why you can't think about anything in your life. There is nothing for you to do other than to listen. So this CD is about how to listen to the higher self. What is the higher self? It is the greater aspect of yourself. It is the messenger spirit, your messenger. You asked questions and your spirit is going to give you some answers. But first, it has to take you into the dark night of the soul. And this is where you will start to dictate and you will start to listen to your higher self and its messages that it brings to you. The main important issue behind the dark night of the soul is it wants you to be healed. And the more healed that you can become, then the more you can hear the message. So the dark night of the soul is a messenger. It wants to help you. And in return, you have got to help your higher self. So you become a partnership. You become friends with it. You can't run away from it. You've got to love the dark night of the soul. And I mean really love because it loves you. And even though you have this feeling and you say that it's depression and God, yes, it does feel like depression. But what if it was the energy of the spirit was so powerful and so big that it dwarfed your energy and drained your batteries? That's what it did for me. So the more I communicated with it, the more I seemed to be able to charge up my batteries and to change my energy. So the dark night of the soul gets you to a point that says, now I have your attention. Are you willing to listen? Are you wanting to be helped? And of course, your answers are yes. So in this dark night, be prepared for an adventure and a journey to your darkest, deepest fears, because here is where the treasure lays. And in your fears, you're gonna go right back through your journey Look at all of your experiences and see how you feel. Now, there is only one feeling in this dark night of the soul, and it's the opposite to the feeling that you want to feel. So let's say at the end of one scale, it's of fear. On the other end of the scale, it's of love. Let's say on one end of the scale, it's your human painful self, and the other end of the scale is your higher self. One is your material and one is your spiritual. There is a duality here that is going on. So therefore, this is why you are bouncing from one world into another world. And as time goes on, you have to decide which world do you want to be in. It is scary and it is a strange place to find yourself because your outside world will start to change. And as the spirit side of you starts to come closer, and the presence makes itself known that you are willing to listen, it can completely transform your ideals and beliefs that you've had about yourself and your journey of life. Let's say for instance, that you've had a very terrible childhood and let's say throughout most of your life, you've never felt the power of love. Maybe you wanted someone to give it to you. Maybe you had a lot of love to give to somebody but you just didn't know how. And every time you did want to give love, you just got destroyed. So therefore you think, why is it? The more I love, the more people hate me or hurt me. Go to the pain of that. And that's how you will feel in all of your journeys and experiences that you have trodden. You will feel just one feeling throughout it all. Doesn't matter who said what, where and when, check out your feelings. One feeling, and it's a feeling that's in the pit of your stomach. And it's a feeling that you may call depression. You may call it heartache. You may call it disappointment. You may call it conflict. You may call it sadness. You may call it suicidal. It is a feeling. So if we take out all of the words, 
that tries to explain what you're going through, you will be left with a feeling. And this feeling is hard to explain. And that's why you cannot explain what this feeling is all about. So your levels of communication have to unravel what is this feeling. So what I want you to do is try and describe on a piece of paper what this feeling feels like. And of course, as you put down your answers, look at that question and look at that answer and see whether or not your body says, yes, that's it, you've got it. If not, you haven't written the right words down. So therefore, this is where we start to change the questions to discover what is this feeling? Because your messenger has come to you to get to the deep rooted question, to find the deep rooted answer to get that moment when you feel it in your body that you've got it. So let's suppose him, throughout all your life, it's been difficult and it's left you in a place in your experience of where you are now of deep suffering and deep pain. A pain that you can't understand because you may be 40 years old and you think to yourself, how can I undo 40 years of experiences and try to discover who and what did this pain to me? Use one word and it's called fear. You sense a fear. Your experience has taught you fear. It's engulfed you. It's in your body. It's in your mind and it's stuck as an energy block in your body. Now, the power of healing is to be able to understand this. You need to find that trigger point. So I'm going to start it off with fear. Write down all of your fears and then see if they are actually real or they are just something in your imagination or they are something that you're just carrying on from your drama or your situation from life experiences. So why does this process create so much fear? The reason being is, is that your messenger, your messenger's calling card is of fear. Because if you can fear so much and understand the fear, once you neutralize that fear, you will have an incredible feeling, not just of love, but a naturalness. Naturalness is the key. Naturalness is where you're heading for. How great would it be to feel natural? When you know that you are healed, you will sense a feeling of naturalness, just like a child. And that's why they say, go back and be like a child. You cannot get into the kingdom of heaven unless you are like a child. Your dark night takes you back as a child through your experiences because this is where the problem started in your human life. But there is a point before all of that. And that's the point of where you're going. This is the rebirth. This will be your awakening. This will be where you will begin again. So the messenger comes in and he wants to diminish your past. And as you travel down through your past, you will find different ways of being able to re-educate yourself in what it truly means. If you come from no love and you sense that and you feel that and you wish that you'd found love, how about that if you rewrote that and said, I didn't come from no love, they was teaching me how to love. So there's your question. Was my journey teaching me how to love? Now you have two choices. You can either carry on your experiences or you can transform and you can say to yourself, this is not me, it is my experience. I want to start again. So this is the basis of your story. This is your messenger. This is your dark night. And these are the questions that you should be asking. Ask your messenger, what is it that you would like to know? Ask it, what is it you want me to be? Ask this dark night messenger, what would you like me to do? And just leave it there and it will be shown to you. So remember, your messenger's calling card is heavy. It comes with great powers and great gifts. And so therefore, this overshadowing comes with a language and an energy that you have never felt before. Yes, you call it depression. But this depression 
gets you to search for the truth. And while you are searching for the truth, you will be asking the messenger or the light for answers. This is how it works. You go into darkness, you question in that darkness, and then you ask for the light. You try to find a way out. So your darkness is a good place. So don't try to fight it. Stay with it. Understand it. Love it. Comfort it. Embrace it. Be part of it. You have to. Because it's not going to let you go. You have been chosen. And this dark night wants you to be the messenger from the message that you will receive from your dark night. I call it the second chance. And when you get a second chance, it's like the rebirth. You get to the point, you understand where you have come from, and you settle it down. And you say to yourself, if I was to begin this journey again, how would I like to begin? How would I like to think? How would I like to feel? And what would the choices I would like to make? It's never too late to begin. It's never too late to transform. So this second chance that your messenger is given to you needs you to change your levels of consciousness and awareness to who you are. The messenger comes and looks at you and says, hey, why don't you love yourself? Why don't you like yourself? Why do you treat yourself like this? Why do you abuse yourself? Why do you keep putting yourself down? Your messenger doesn't like this. And so this is why he has come, or she has come. It's up to you to decide if it's a he or a she. Let it work with your energy. I like to call mine it because it's not a he and it's not a she. But I did discover that my spiritual self's name is called Embaki. This is my God-given name. Embaki is the code and the structure and the information and the language of who I am. I used to be Trevor Owsley. I used to be a hairdresser, makeup artist and a photographer. But that was then. In my dark night, I decided I was going to change. I was going to transform myself into a different being. And this dark messenger was there to help me. So what is the main purpose of this journey of discovering that you are not in control and that something else is taking you over? So what is its main purpose? One is to awaken you. Two, to heal you and to pull you out of the mainstream of life. So your pain and disappointments is all about life. Surely you must be at the point where you say, there's got to be more to life than this. This surely cannot be it. I cannot keep living my life like this. It's ridiculous. It's actually destroying me. So what does it mean to actually awaken? Awaken to what? Well, as we've spoken, fear is your first sign of awakening. Your second sign is depression. Your third sign is that your mind is going to shut down. Your fourth sign is your feelings. So to awaken you is to awaken the way that you think, is to awaken the way that you feel, but most importantly, to awaken who you are looking at. To awaken you means that you came here with a purpose, and that was to love life and to love yourself. But then, as you travel through and understand the language of your dark night, you start to understand that you do have a meaning and purpose. And you are here to awaken to be the best person that you can. And that means to be nice, to be loving, to be understanding, to be compassionate, and to basically look at life in a completely different way. For me, I see beamy beings everywhere. And for me, I am a beamy. I could possibly say that my higher self is a beamy because this be me wanted me to be it. It wanted me to be the real be me. So to pull me out of the mainstream of life was very difficult because how does that happen? Where does it leave me? Where am I going? There's nothing else there. There's nothing for me to cling on to. It's empty. Ah, see, this is where you will start to create. You're here to create what is empty. You're here to fill the void and the gaps in the darkness. Because the darkness is keeping you trapped in mainstream. But your higher self 
will do everything in its power to pull you out. And that's why you lose everything. That's why you can't hold on to everything. And that is why every time you try to go back into who you used to be and what you used to do, you know it doesn't happen. It doesn't even feel right. So where does it leave us? To awaken means you are needing to create something. Create something within yourself. Come up with a better idea, a better vision of who you are and what you can do. How do we do this? Look at the things that you are good at. You may say, well, I'm very good at working for somebody else. So let's turn that around and let's say, well, how about you saying, well, I'm very good at working for myself. You may say, well, I'm very good at helping people. So let's turn it around and let's say, you are very good at helping yourself. And you say, I would love to help the world. And the messenger will say to you, well, let's help you first then. So it's about helping you first. It's not a selfish move at all. You must save yourself first. So it's pulling you out of the mainstream of life. This is where you're going to have to take the journey. So start to resolve that. You have no chance of stopping it. It's going to happen anyway. So you might as well start to prepare yourself for something else. But you may say, but I have nothing else I can do. I don't have another job. I don't have another career. I'm not good at anything else. I have no confidence. This needs to stop. You are an intelligent, conscious, body-mind energy. You are an incredible, walking, talking, priceless piece of art. Only the human ways will put you down. So we have to come away from the programming and the language that you've taught yourself to understand that language is no good. And this is why I'm going to teach you the Be Me language, because it's about you, your body, your mind, and your emotions, and your energy, and your experience. So to awaken is to awaken you to life, in life, to see that you're a walking, talking, priceless gift from the Creator. This is awakening. You awaken within your thoughts, which means start to change your thoughts. How? Use different words. Change the words of how you feel. Maybe the words are all wrong, and I'm telling you, the words are wrong, and that's why you cannot find an answer. So listening to your dark night of the soul comes in feelings, comes in your dreams, comes in visions, comes in intuition. What is intuition? An intuition is an inner teacher. And when your intuition starts to kick in, it's letting you know that you may be going down the same pathway. You may be trying to experience something that you've already experienced. So there's a, a familiarity there. So listening to your dark night is to be able to say, okay, I don't need to experience this. I've already experienced this once. I don't need to go through it again. Maybe you've experienced this certain situation twice, three times, four times, until you get it, until you understand its pain. And then you can start to be very aware of what you're doing. This is the true meaning of psychic, you know. Psychic means to understand that you're about to do the same thing as you've always been doing. The dark night of the soul comes in and says, we're going to change the patterns of who you are. So this is the first stage of awakening. Awakening to what? To heal yourself. So to heal yourself, what does that mean? One, to love yourself is the greatest healing that you can achieve. Two, to understand your history, your biology is a great healing. This also will awaken you. To awaken you to heal is to understand that you can actually heal. It's just you've never tried. To heal your mind from the words is one of the stages that you will understand. And again, understanding your emotions with the words that you're using in your mind is the very thing that is making you ill. It's because the language is wrong. The education is wrong. That's not life. That just teaches you how to work. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't teach you how to be a being. You learn that as you go along. But what you've discovered is, it's all wrong. This is why your messenger has come to you and says, okay, let's talk. Let's communicate on a different level. And let's try and dig you out of this grave. So, the dark night of the soul. 
is awakening you and it is healing you and it's trying to save your life because all you want to do is take your life. The dark night of the soul isn't wanting to kill you, it's wanting to heal you. There's the difference. Energy can heal you, energy can kill you. You have to decide which side of the fence you want to be on. There is your two worlds that you're stepping in. One's trying to kill you, one's trying to heal you. Which one are you going to head for? So, listening to your dark night of your soul in visions. You may see visions while you're awake. And how does this happen? Let's say you're watching TV, and then all of a sudden, you're not watching TV. You're thinking about something else. Something else has grabbed your attention, and you're looking at your thoughts and thinking, why am I thinking this? And you see something. That's a vision. Why is it a vision? Because it wasn't something that you was thinking of. It just happened. Why is it sometimes that a thought comes into your head when you wasn't thinking it? See, two different ways of thinking. You think about what you want to eat. You think about what you're going to do at work tomorrow. You think about what time you're going to get up out of bed. You think about what you're going to wear. But when thoughts come in that you are not thinking about, that's your messenger. That's the question, and there's the answer. The question is, why am I thinking that? Well, you wasn't thinking that. That got put into you from your messenger. Are you getting it? Really think about what I've just said there. Look at the thoughts that pop into your head that you were not thinking about. You might be doing the washing up and all of a sudden you're thinking about angels. Well, that means you're not in the now. That means you've gone somewhere else. That means an angel or the presence of is put that into your mind. So when that comes into your mind, expand it. Ask, why have you put the word angel into my mind? And you'll be pleasantly surprised. You will get an answer for sure. Try it. Trust me, it does work. And the same as always carry a pen and paper like I do. I always write. It is the greatest form of communication when thoughts just arise from nowhere. So listen to your thoughts. Listen to your higher self. Listen to your feelings. When these thoughts come into you, you hear the word, you see the word, you wonder why the word is there. Close your eyes for the moment, sense what has come into your mind, and then start to feel it. And then again, it will start to open itself. This is how mediumship works. When a client comes to you and they're looking for a message, what I do is I get out of the way and I empty myself to allow thoughts to come in. Now, at one stage, I can look at that and think, why am I thinking that? But as my confidence grew, I knew it was a message. And so therefore, it may not have made sense to me. But as soon as I handed over that message, the client knew exactly what I was saying. And she would then explain to me why I got that message. Now, this is happening to you. You may not be a medium, you may not be a psychic, but let me tell you, you are because these are your natural gifts. You just believe that you don't have them and that only special people have these gifts. Oh no. Once you work with the dark night of the soul, you will understand that you're actually being a medium. What is a medium? It's a co-creator that somebody is communicating between the two different worlds. So therefore, you become a medium. You are in between two worlds, between that world and this world. So therefore, you are a medium. You could call it the balance between your materiality and your spirituality. You become the medium. And this is where your messenger is, see? And in that place, yeah, it's quite dark. It's quite empty. There are no faults. There is nothing going on. Because in that stillness, in that darkness, and you know that darkness, in the mind you think, why is my mind so blank? I can't think of anything. Sit with that. It is a great place to be because the messages are coming. Get your pen and paper and listen and see what thoughts arise. Yes, you may find them silly. Yes, you may think that you're making them up, but you're not. Listen to your intuition. The messages could come in so wonderful, so powerful. You couldn't make them up. Remember, you're a human being learning to connect with your higher self. You don't know this language yet. Your dark night 
your messenger can show you your answers in experiences. For instance, you hear many people fall over, they broke their ankle, and you may say, oh, that's a shame, fell over and broke their ankle. But really, what is it really doing? Is it somebody that's lost their foot in? Is it somebody that put out to the universe that said, I just don't want to work anymore. I'm just fed up with it all. I wish I could have a couple of days off. And so therefore, you go break your ankle. Now you may feel very disappointed with that because now you can't go to work. But you have to pay close attention to your thoughts of what you put out. So therefore, there are thoughts that you put out to the universe, to your spirit, that you wanted answers for. And it could go like this. Oh God, please help me out. Send me a sign. Send me a message. Let me know that I'm in the right place, doing the right thing. And you just leave it there. Would you think that that doesn't get answered? I'm telling you now, they do. And this is why your messenger has come to you to help you to see the signs and the messages. And believe you me, they are everywhere. You will not believe what is going on when you start to understand and transform and step into your higher self, or better still, let's put it this way, let your higher self step into you. Let it become you. And that is why you are dying, because your higher self is taking over. You will become your higher self, your greater be me self. Your body will change, your mind will change, your energy will change, your experiences will change. So check out your visions, check out your dreams because they are still visions and they are still messages. Dreams are not dreams, they are messages from your soul communicating with your higher self. It's the only way that they can get to you. So then look at your experiences. Look at how you are feeling your experience. You know what feels right and you know what feels wrong. You have a choice to make and that's where you find yourself stuck. If you're finding that you're having to make a choice and you don't know what to choose, then you cannot do that choice. Let it choose it for you. It's like you may say to yourself, I'm not sure if I want to leave my job. Oh yeah, I do want to leave my job. Oh no, but I don't want to leave my job. Oh, I don't know what to do. Shall I or shan't I? And so therefore you go and ask your friend, Oh, I don't know whether to leave my job or not. And they'll give you some excuse or some answer to it, but ultimately it's still your answer. But if you allow that question to permeate the universe and to connect him with your soul, your higher self will actually choose it for you. And so therefore, you may hate your job and then all of a sudden you're going to work. Someone will say to you, I'm sorry, but we're closing the business. I'm afraid I've got to let you go. And you'll go, oh no, devastating blow. What am I going to do? You go into fear, you go into panic and think, oh my God, I've got to go and get another job. But how about if that you are such a powerful being that you actually closed that shop down and your higher self made sure it was going to happen because you said you wanted to change your job. You couldn't make up your mind, so your messenger made it up for you. And again, this is so important to know how to listen to your higher self because it's coming in your experiences. Think about it. Write down your experiences where you thought or wanted something to happen or you wanted a change and it happened. Let's say you're in a marriage. Let's say you really don't like your husband or you really don't like your wife and you're just putting up with them. But you really would like to get out of it. But I can't. What am I going to say to the children? What about the car? What about the money? I may not be able to survive. But you just put the thought out. Give it three months, six months, nine months, a year maybe, could be five. And then all of a sudden, you may find out they're having an affair. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Oh my God, you've never felt so much pain. He is the bad thing. He is the worst thing that could have happened. I hate him. I want to kill him. But stop for a moment. Go back a year ago. You said you wanted out. Now's your opportunity. And that's how I've looked at my life. I see the opportunity. I don't see the disappointment. I see the opportunity. Why? Because I know my higher self is making me help it happen. You want out, says the Dark Knight. Okay, 
Let's change this experience and let's make it happen. But you have to know that that's where it all started from. And so therefore the process begins. And of course you've then got to go through the experience of understanding that this person has had an affair. So of course there's going to be a lot of pain. But how many of you have experienced this? And how many of you have actually gotten through? But the truth of the matter is, did you really let the pain go? And the only way that you can let the pain go is when you know it was done in your best interest. It was done for you to gain freedom, for you to begin again. Didn't you not say that you wanted peace and quiet and I wish this man was out of my life? What has happened? So there you are. Your question got answered. You just have to deal with the pain. But the pain won't be there if you understand it's what you asked for. There's some aha moments there, isn't there? I know you can feel them. I want to hear you say, my God, he's right. Yes, because if I didn't end that relationship, then I would have never have found the next one, which was absolutely brilliant. All right, maybe that one only lasted three months. Maybe it lasted six years. And then you started to feel it go down again, didn't you? And so therefore everything was breaking down again. So you have to say to yourself, okay, here we go again. This is all breaking down. Are you going to cry about it? Or are you going to let the pathway see where it takes you? Because your soul and your messenger are working together. It wants you to be healed. It wants you to be loved. It wants you to be a messenger. It wants you to experience life. And this is the only way it can happen. It's in the darkness. It's in the emotional turmoils. That's the only way that you can become enlightened. It's the only way that you can find happiness. Because you spent so much time in the darkness. To understand the darkness neutralizes itself. Therefore you find happiness. So in darkness, you seek happiness and you scream for happiness, but it's not until you understand the darkness, automatically, you become happy. It's incredible how it works. So this is the old be me self and the new be me self. Your higher self is getting you to be the new be me self, but you gotta let go because it's like stepping into another world. It's like stepping into someone else's shoes. It's like being a new you. Of course it feels uncomfortable, believe it or not. It's a strange feeling. You think differently, you act differently, you may even eat differently. But it's teaching you to be the greater good, to be the best you can be. I call it the be me baby. Body, mind, energy, being a better you. And we are babies. In the beginning, you feel like a child and that's why you feel so useless. You feel like that you can't do anything for yourself and that you can't do anything for anyone else. Like a child. Do you get it? It's like, I'm beginning again. So therefore, it does feel unusual. And that's why so many of you feel such a lot of fear because you may be 40 years old, but you feel like a kid. Am I going to go out there? Am I going to get a job? Am I going to survive? Am I going to pay the bills? Will I ever find a relationship? All these questions in the dark night of the soul are incredible. Always ask your dark night, your messenger, how to heal. How can I see this in a different way? Communicate with it like it's your best friend because it is your best friend. In actual fact, it's going to be you. Because when it engulfs you like that, of course it brings you a lot of fears, I've said in the beginning, but you get used to it, you understand it, you filter out this fear, and then all of a sudden, you're in it, you're becoming your higher self, but you've not acknowledged it, because Monday turns into Tuesday, turns into Wednesday, turns into Thursday. So when does that point come when you ever say to yourself, oh my God, I'm actually am my higher self? Why is that? Well, I think differently. I feel differently. I used to be in conflict and now I'm not. I never used to be able to love, but now I can. I never used to like myself, but now I do. And now when I look at myself, I like what I see. Find your balance between your old self and your new self. The changes are there. You just think you're still stuck, but you're not. Believe me, you have grown. You wouldn't be listening to the CD if you hadn't. So listening to your higher self, it's one of the greatest transformations you can ever endure. It's the greatest of great because your higher self is your spirit self. If you don't decide to be your spirit self, when you leave this planet, you will meet this spirit self and you will have wished that you did listen. Your spirit self will say to you, but I sent you all the signs. I gave you all the messages. I even gave you the dreams and the visions. 
And I even popped it into your intuition. And I even tried to change your experience. But you didn't get it. Oh no. Too late, you will say. You could have done this all different. So the Dark Knight is helping you to get it right now. And this is why I'm sharing with you what I know. Because I couldn't find answers. There isn't no book out there. I went full on. I lost everything because I did want to help people. And I want to help people to understand these feelings. Because they're so different. They're hard to find the right words. And so therefore, when my code came into me, intelligent communication, awakening body, mind, energy, which means I see a be me, which means did I see me being a be me? Because my spirit said to me, I want you to be me. If you can become me, I will give you all the knowledge, all the wisdom and all the understanding that you will need to know on how to heal yourself. I took that challenge and I'm saying to you, take that challenge and you may be thinking to yourself but i can't well i'm gonna say to you but you already are you're already in it you're already speaking to yourself you communicate with yourself all the time you just don't believe what you're communicating with it's intelligence it is your messenger and your messenger is helping you out it's helping you to be you so stay with it people it is the best process you will ever find yourself I hope now, after listening to what I have said to you, it's not about trying to escape from the dark night of the soul, it's about being the dark night of the soul. It's about being the higher self. It's about receiving the message, becoming the messenger, and contain that message within you, learn by it. So I say to you here, what is your message? What is it that you feel that you want to do? Most importantly, is a great question. How do you think you should be being? I'll leave you with these great questions. If you had the chance and the choice, what would you rather be doing? Where would you rather be? What do you feel that you're here to do? What career change would you like to make? What kind of relationship would you love? What part of the world would you like to live in? What is it that you haven't experienced that you would love to experience? You can use all of this information and put it out to the universe, your messenger, and the messenger will make it happen. There's a time limit though. It can happen quick. It can take some time. But what I discovered is, one way or another, your messages will be answered. So stay sharp, stay open, find the true self, feel the true self, and be your true self. This is the ultimate be me. And your higher self is wanting you to be you. Because as soon as you can be you, your higher self and you become one be me entity, fully working together, capable of creating literally anything. There is a magic and a mastery and an adventure just waiting for you when you've understood the dark night of the soul's fears, visions, emotions, dreams, darkness, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that light at the end of the tunnel is you. You're going to save yourself. You're delving into yourself. You're giving yourself a second chance. You are very brave. You are courageous to even take this job on. So I leave you some very important points for you to work with. Balance your emotions. Balance your mind. Balance your conflicts. Rewrite your journey. Understand who you are not, and that will leave you with who you are. And I guarantee you, you are a beamy beam, a body-mind experience that has a beginning, middle, and end to every thought, to every drama, and every situation. So always believe when something is ending, it's going to go to the beginning again. Because the beamy process is like the Alpha and Omega. It has a beginning, and a middle, and an ending, and then a beginning, and then a middle, and then an ending. Think about how many times you've begun, had a middle, and then something ended. The beginning of a job, middle of a job, end of a job, end of a job, brings you a new job. Same with relationships. Beginning of a relationship, the middle of a relationship, and of course, an ending of a relationship. But what does each ending bring you? the chance to begin again. And this is why the dark night of the soul needs to be listened to because it wants you to begin again. 
My name is Trevor Owsley. I'm teaching the dark light of the soul for you to understand your own teachings. I bid you farewell. We will speak very soon. Enjoy this CD. Enjoy being you and enjoy the discovery of the message that your messenger is trying to give to you. And hopefully one day I will hear your great message as you are hearing mine.